If you have a CNC machine and are looking for a simple project to try to make some extra money on the side, stick around for this video as I show you exactly how to make a customizable marble maze. Right off the bat, I want to point out that the custom side of this maze is exactly that, custom. I made this one for a local preschool, and in order to get the image that I wanted on the back, I carved out areas with my machine, filled them with epoxy, and then planed everything down. I don't want to go into any more detail on that process since YouTube is just full of epoxy projects, uh, but just make sure that however you decide to customize this maze, you do that side of the project first. When it comes to material, you'll need to find a one inch thick piece of stock that's 16 inch by eight and three quarter inch. You'll also need a piece of 0 0.08 inch thick acrylic that's the same dimensions as our one inch stock. With our stock dimensions figured out, we can now input those into a CAD program and start assigning toolpaths. The cookie cutter version on how to do that is a large pocket for the acrylic to sit in, a no offset contour for the maze itself, and then a few drilling toolpaths for screw holes. Obviously, I went over that extremely quickly, but as you may have noticed, the build plans show a lot more detail. If you're one of those people that say CNC work isn't woodworking, this next section might upset you. But if you do think it's woodworking, well, hit the subscribe button because it is woodworking. Once our maze is off the machine, I need to use a combination of my bandsaw and spindle sander to add curves onto each of the four corners. I then move on to sanding up to 220 grit or whatever you prefer really, and then move over to my router table to use an eighth inch roundover bit to smooth over all of our edges. After sanding one last time to make sure everything is smooth, I move on to finishing, which I'll admit I would do differently next time around. Because this is teak, I'm using teak oil to finish it, uh, but next time I would use a spray varnish because as you'll see here, there's just too much liquid varnish within these grooves and it just took way too long to dry. Lessons learned and after a few days, it ended up looking pretty good and we can set it aside to carve the acrylic top. Nothing fancy when it comes to the toolpaths for the acrylic, once again using contours and drilling. Uh, what is different is the type of bit we use and our work holding method. I skipped over this page briefly in the beginning of this video, but you can see on page 4 here that all of the CNC bits used in this project are highlighted with that orange star. Right in the middle you'll notice an eighth inch O-flute bit, which is commonly used for cutting plastics. For work holding, I use the painter's tape and CA glue method, which I go into much more detail on a video which I'll post here, where I build a split flat picture frame display. You should check those plans out if you haven't already. Anyway, let's get back to this maze because we're pretty much finished. With our acrylic cleaned up and our maze completely dry, I'll drop in a pachinko ball and then screw down the acrylic using eight pan head screws. And with that, we finally have a finished product, which I think is a pretty good one. Believe it or not, it's harder than it looks to get the ball from the starting point to the end point across the maze, uh, but I think that just makes it that much more fun. I already took a few custom orders for these, and I'm selling them for $85 in my area, but that totally depends on your market. Hopefully this video was easy enough for you to understand, so you can go ahead and make them yourself. Uh, but if not, again, check out those build plans because I think I'm a better explainer on paper than I am at actually talking. Uh, but either way, thanks for watching this video, and good luck!